Once it holds it nice and steady for you. And then you can go in with these and open them. And so then you can just take your next string and hook it right on. Oh, wow. And how many years do you get in this field to have a steady hand like that? I mean, you can't, you clearly can't be Nicolas Cage leaving no. Las Vegas with diphtherium trimmers. So. Definitely not, because then you just close them. Okay. What you'll do with those, if you're not going to make one of those awesome chain mail things, mm -hmm. is what we usually use them for is putting these type of things together. That's my sister's specialty. I'll make these little parts with the loops. Right. This is Liz Taylor slash Queen Elizabeth <laughs> type mm -hmm. jewelry. These are these fancy it's things that are being sold for millions of dollars. Yeah, because it's all Swarovski crystals. Oh. And they just sparkle awesomely. Well, it's clear to me that maybe Anglo-Saxons, Jutes, and Celtics first established <laughs> yeah. the word bling bling. Yes, okay. exactly. Okay. Definitely. All the chains. Wow. You have to, if you want to make the little round loops like that, you have to use this particular type of flyer. This just for jewelers. Okay, I was going to ask you too. Are these things the same things that we use to build PCs, repair PCs, install motherboards and electronics? Probably. Probably? Yeah. Okay. The ones I got that were for electronics are the ones that didn't hold up as well. Oh. Okay, so that's a trade <laughs> secret right there. Mm -hmm. Do not go to Radio Shack right. to get your craftsman. <laughs> that's, uh, Tools. Because yeah, the, the, the cutters, the little wire cutters, that was yeah, they, the ones that... They didn't like to cut our wire. No, wire was too thick. I see, I see. And so they ended up looking like Snaggletooth mm -hmm. all the way down. <laughs> so I had to get a special pair. Okay. Do you have... Uh, so all this ends up coming out of one of those little boxes. Do you have like... Off small pieces. Do you have like a set amount of... How should I say... Uh, if you are making a piece such as that, mm -hmm. do you say to yourself first, I'm only going to, going to a lot X amount of beads for it or you <clears> just, just, um, actually no, because sometimes as like, especially a piece like this, or I have one in the window that's twice the size of this one, you know, hangs all the way down to here and it's, it's um, harness. it's a harness necklace. It actually depends on as I'm making it. How many beads goes into it? I don't have a set amount because sometimes I'll use more, sometimes I use less. It just depends on what the necklace says to me as I'm making it. So. Okay, okay. And it's kind of like Star Wars. You allow the force yes, to move. Yes, the force moves it and it. you can either go to the dark side and make it very, very expensive or I you see. can um, stay over on the light side and make it... Smaller and less expensive. I see. Expensive. Mind what you've learned. Save you it can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And how much does a piece like that go for? After you factor in the time and the materials and the expertise. Like this one is 50 because it has vintage. This chain is actually 1960s vintage chain. It's not something you can just go to Walmart and buy. And these actually aren't Swarovskis, so if these were, it would probably be more expensive because they cost a lot more. I see. That's the angled Chinese crystal. So basically, you can't buy that you chain to, today. No, you can't. Well, uh, we just have, going into a Target or Walmart no. because it's probably the same chain that uh, Thurston Howell's wife had on mm -hmm. in Gilligan's Island? Yes. Okay. We like to buy stuff that we don't want you to buy our jewelry and say, hey, walk in Walmart, there's my jewelry. We make one of a kind. We do not make more than one piece of the same type of thing. Um, and we find different things that you wouldn't see in Walmart or Belks or Target or wherever else. We want it to be completely different. Something that, you know, you say, hey, where did you get that? You know, you will never buy another one just like it because I won't make two of the same thing. Okay. Well, unless you ask me to. Like we, we have done it for a wedding, but we still like to make them different. Okay, this is uh, <laughs> kind of like those Fabergé eggs. Yes. They're not the same. Yes. Cause and when they're auctioned off, no one can say I have one exactly like it. Exactly. Okay, outstanding. Mm -hmm. As I look on these shelves and stuff, I see yeah. things that are categorized as yes. uh, pendants and settings and charms. How do you stay on top <laughs> of all of these individual parts that make up the collective 
the final product of the piece of jewelry that you're making. Is this almost uh, like, uh, how should I say, the true or the only methodology of being able to stay on top of it? You have to actually label these things and put it in Tupperware? Yeah, they're just little, um, they're a lot like Tupperware. Let me see, this one, that one's not very exciting. That's just got um, stuff in it. Let's see. We'll look at the Swarovski crystal one. Is this a famous Swarovski? Yes, the famous Swarovski. And they're just in there by color, except as I'm working on necklaces, sometimes I'll have them put together. Outstanding. I'm seeing everything that looks like ruby, sapphire, Mm -hmm. emerald, and all of that. Oh, yes. And, um, you know, they're all shiny and all pretty, and we have to have them separated because if I'm making a green necklace... I'll have to have green beads to go along with it, so I can pick up the green box. And there's more green stuff, but these are are more natural stuff. I see. And would you say you use the same type Mm of... Okay, Mm -hmm. okay, outstanding. Except she works more with the bone and more natural woods and stuff like that, and I do more of the bling bling, I do more of the shiny, shiny, and... The, okay. You know, stuff like that. But I've gotten her into using Swarovskis, too, in her wood, with her wood and her bone so that, you know, it's a little more sparkly. I understand. I have to, I have to make my sister more sparkly. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> but, yes, and then, you know, you just work from there. And a lot of times what you have in your mind that you're going to make does not come out the way you, you know, you can imagine the necklace as it's going to be, but that's not exactly how it's going to turn out. Well, I imagine... Uh... Mozart and Beethoven felt that way. Yeah, it, they didn't think their concerto was going to end up being what it was right. because they wasn't even thinking on that grandiose level. Well, the thing is, is it talks to you and it, I know that sounds kind of crazy, the jewelry tells you what it wants to look like. Mm-hmm. And so as you're building it, it will turn out the way it wants it to be. Kind of like with a painting or drawings. Mm-hmm. You can want it to be something at first and then it tells you where it wants to go. Mm-hmm. So, All right. It sounds like the precious. <laughs> oh, yes. Most definitely. definitely. I see. Now, behind you, I see Imagine, Dream, Aspire. Mm-hmm. Did you make these things, guys? No. No? These are uh, something else that's well, being sold here, or offered in this cubicle? Are you talking about the paintings or the words? Uh, any of it. Okay. We made the paintings, but we bought the yeah. Okay. Well, let's focus on the paintings. This is by Karen. Yes. Coletti. Mm-hmm. This is Time t- Stand Still. Yes. It's the second painting. That reminds me of like Synchronicity 1 and Synchronicity <laughs> 2. And it's oil on canvas. Yes. What was going through your mind when this um, I have came to get out? it done or my teacher is going to kick my tail. So this was part of art school? <laughs> yes. This is... Um, I took art at Patrick Henry Community College, and this is something that Jerry Bannon pulled out of me to paint. Okay. In my limited, I won't even say limited, I've probably been (laughs) to about 20 or 30 art museums in North America, and I've been to the biggest one in New York. And when I look at this, what I see is the skeletal remains of what used to be a bison or a steer or an antelope (laughs) and then there are two bluebirds Mm -hmm. next to the actual head of this particular animal and if i'm wrong then this must be driftwood yes that's driftwood. okay okay (laughs) (laughs) it's actually a deer skeleton and a cat head driftwood and two porcelain birds i see i see Mm -hmm. I thought about saying that's the alien's head from Indiana Jones yeah, it does in the look uh, like crystal an alien. skull. <laughs> <laughs> I try my best not to make it look like an alien, but it still okay. looks like an alien. And you got an A on this? Yes, I did. Okay, so you know beads, you know mm-hmm. jewelry, mm-hmm. and you know oil. Mm-hmm. Outstanding. And, and who it. framed it? My dad did. Our dad did. Okay. So dad is the framer. Yes. He's the wood guy. Yes, okay, definitely. and this sells for two hundred and fifty dollars. Is that correct? <laughs> yes. Okay. Time stands still. Mm-hmm. How
how does that correlate with what we're looking at? Is it saying that even after the erosion process, when our bodies decay, that uh, I guess time never was what time was not, for if life and time did begin, mm-hmm. then time would come when time would end? Yep. That pretty much says it? Yep. Okay. I'm not too shabby. <laughs> would you like to show a piece of art? This is one of mine. Okay. The Barn Sisters, y'all, live. <laughs> Friday Art Walk. This is one of my favorites. I really like this one. This one is called Evening Glory. Evening Glory. Mm-hmm. $350. Acrylic. Mm-hmm. acrylic on board. Miss mm-hmm. Barnes, do elaborate on what inspired you. To paint um, this. If you go up to Philpot Lake, you see all these nice little hills and coves, and so it's Philpot inspired. And I love that that time of the evening when it's a certain type of weather, when everything just looks like it turns to gold, and it has that. It seems like it's more alive, and it, you can even breathe it in the air. It just gives you a sensation of feeling, and it feels like it's going into everything. Was this a summer month? Yes. Okay, I've yet to be here in the summer, so I've yet to see this. However, I did dedicate a video segment I did to my deceased mother recently uh, for 18 minutes about Philpot Lake, and it was in October. Mm -hmm. And everything was kind of dead on the trees, but you could not overlook the fact that it looked like we was no longer on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. That view with the Appalachian Mountains and the very, very distance and the way that the little small hills that were coming off of the water kind of reminded me of Kong Island from the 1970s version with Jessica Lange Uh of King Kong. So you captured it in the summer. Were you in love? No. No? Were you seeking or searching? What mindset were you in? What would you tell the children when they sit down and try to paint something like this? I always have to try to make sure that the way I do mine, if I'm not actually out painting it in nature, a lot of times I'll pull from what I store up here. And so when I'll you know, kind of sort through my mental images of what I'd like to paint, I feel what mood I'm in. And if I feel, you know, kind of retrospective, I'll paint something that looks a little more still and, the, you know, the water's really still. And if I'm feeling more excited, I'll make sure I'm painting something that has a lot of motion in it. And so it just depends. But my, especially my favorite colors are the oranges and reds and yellows. And so I use those a lot. I understand. Red is my favorite so. color. I think you did a marvelous job. Thank you. It's only $350, people. <laughs> only $350. But you will definitely wake up in the morning with this in your bedroom wall to a beautiful blend of all the colors that make up the sun, which is the light of each of our days. And we have a final painting over here. Who is responsible for this? Again, that's me, Karen. Okay. That was art class again. It's charcoal on just regular artist paper. Okay. When I look at this, At initial glance, initial glance, I see an ear, I see an eye, I see a beak. The only thing that this could be is a mutant emu crossed with a a toucan. Am I even close? No, we're near close. No, I don't. It is a um, magnolia pod. As in a plant? Yes, it's a plant. It's wow, here. that is very high definition. Yes, he told us, our art teacher told us to find a piece of the magnolia pot and draw it. And I went in as close as I could. And and what a marvelous job she did. The only person who could have even come close to that is someone who is on peyote or mescaline. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was fun to draw. I love the ch- charcoal is, again, it feels like it's alive. It's something that... You, it tells you what it wants to do. 
you don't tell it what to do, it tells you where it wants to go and what it wants to do. As with these two, it's the same thing. It's with the charcoal, it, um, it's alive. You gotta okay. love Karen, folks. The force is definitely <laughs> strong with her. Oh, yes, the force is definitely strong within this. And what is the price tag on this piece? I don't know if I have a price on that one. Oh, 100. Okay. Yeah. $100, folks. Come down here to the address again 105 East Church Street. There it is. And you can buy a plant that has been magnified <laughs> at least 500 times. And it's done with charcoal, mm -hmm. which is not an easy task to do because what you see that is kind of white or light is the absence of charcoal. Yes. So this took some time and it's well worth a hundred dollars. And as we slide over to the left here, <laughs> we see a singer sewing machine. Yes. Do you guys do drapes too? No, I do purses. Uh, um, don't even know if I have any over here. There's one on the I do make purses. Okay. What is um, the official uh, title for that art? Fiber arts, I guess. I fiber? don't know. Okay, okay. Actually, it just makes me mad, so I don't do it very often. Okay, but the same thing that you're doing with this is the same thing, let's say, Coach does with their pocketbooks. Yes. Donna Corinne? Okay, mm -hmm. you got to put it together, and you got to sew it together, and you got to yes. put a handle on it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, um... I don't do it very often because most of the time fabric goes flying across the studio. Yeah. If I can just venture off for a second, hold that handle a little tighter. Okay. Trust and believe. This woman knows exactly what she's talking about. <laughs> Notice how perfect her fingernails are. <laughs> now, back to the show. But yes, um, I do purses. I haven't done them. In, I have not sewn in quite a while because I um, don't think I have enough drugs to do it. I see. <laughs> I see. Okay. Okay. But I do enjoy sewing every once in a while. Outstanding. Outstanding. So. And of course, we know you know how to read a pattern because you are a sewing machine operator. Um, Where do you get your fabrics from? Joann's. Um, some of it has been donated to me. Does everyone around Martinsville know where Joann's is? Um, it's in the mall. It's um, the side of Country Cooking. Liberty uh -huh. Fair Mall, y'all, yeah. next to Country co uh, Cooking. This mm -hmm. is uh, where you get your fabrics from, Joanne's. Yes. She'll be happy to see you come down <laughs> and tell them Karen sent you. Yes. Word of mouth is the most powerful recommendation. Most definitely. Again, we are here with those crafty barn sisters. <laughs> All right. So what would you like to tell the children uh, uh, in order to inspire them to, uh, you know, go into the, the area that you have gone into in terms of the arts? Um, it has to be something that you enjoy and something that you let take, you need for it to take you over to be able to enjoy it. It's not something that you can force. It's not something that, um, yes, it does come naturally, but it's also something that you really need to work at. Because if you'd seen our jewelry three years ago, or anything that we did three years ago, it's kind of like, really? You want to sell that? But working with fellow artists and working with each other, we have grown. And it's something that, um, it, you do have to work at it. It's not something that just, you know, it's, it's not something easy. Art is very hard, but enjoyable. Outstanding. <laughs> well, we have run out of time here. And this is 20-minute segment with Ooh. the Barnes <laughs> Sisters, live from Martinsville Art Walk. First Friday, every month, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. We'd love to see you. Yes. Bye-bye.